when will Ethereum finally make it to the $2,000 mark? Let's take a look at that today on the Ethereum versus USD chart, Ethereum versus Bitcoin chart, and also take a look at some of the latest Bitcoin news, which could really hype up the scene, including MasterCard. If you're new to the channel, my name is Jason. Thank you for stopping by. Consider hitting the subscribe button down below and the bell notification icon if you want to be updated with everything about cryptocurrency, taking profits and learning how to cycle those profits into other investments. If you find value from the video, hit the like button down below. It goes a long way to helping out the channel. All right, let's dive into our first piece and we're gonna look at a little bit of Ethereum news. Basically, what I'm taking out of the news here is just how much is coming on the Ethereum network. We've all heard about it before. Let's just do a quick update of the news headlines. This is how I'm able to scale through the news a hell of a lot quicker than trying to go through every single item itself. We can take a look at the headlines and essentially we're going to learn what we need to from that. Ethereum killers, layer two tokens rally despite 5% Bitcoin drop. So the market is still finding a lot of strength even though Bitcoin is not looking as stable as it once was just a few days ago, of course. Ethereum network competitors are seeing substantial gains as high gas fees push users to search for cheaper alternatives. We'll take a look at this article. I don't think this is going to be such an issue for Ethereum, especially with the network effect that Ethereum has. The developers are all there. There has to be more than one smart contract platform. And of course, we see Polkadot, we see Cardano, and we see a number of these other smart contract platforms all vying for a piece of that same ecosystem. Moving down further, there's a lot of news coming through from NFTs, which are the non-fungible tokens. We've got Premier League football clubs entering partnerships, looking at using Ethereum. We have uh, funding going on on DeFi. Virtual land can now be worth more than real estate, the real thing, after plot sells for a record 1.5 million. So this is all based on the Ethereum blockchain. Next up, we've got CME's Ether Future drove more than $30 million on the first day. So we recently just saw the, an Ethereum futures contract come out, $30 million on the first day, not too shabby. DeFi wars heat up as Curve Finance has total value locked hits nearly $4 billion and it surpasses Uniswap. So there's just so much more money being locked up on Ethereum for these smart contracts and these decentralized exchanges. We can take a look at DeFi Pulse and they've shown the top six. Maker at the top, Aave, Compound, Curve, Uniswap. So Uniswap's only just slightly behind, but that's a pretty big move up the ranks from Curve as Uniswap has been basically the number one player in that space for some time. More good news for Curve, which is on Ethereum, but it looks like it's coming to Polkadot. So it's going on to Equilibrium's Polkadot parachain. So if you're unfamiliar with Polkadot, it is a not really Ethereum killer, it's supposed to be working alongside Ethereum. And it looks like in this case might be the actual plan as a decentralized exchange curve finance is getting onto Polkadot. Polkadot has at the moment 100 parachains, which other projects can connect to. Equilibrium looks like it has one of those. And then curve is connecting to that parachain so that both of the smart contracts can talk between each other. Ethereum connecting with Polkadot more good news for all of these ecosystems coming together and talking with each other. Another reason why I don't think there's going to be one winner, it's going to be an easy move between all of these different major smart contracts. The way I see it is kind of like moving between countries, except so much more seamlessly. Imagine if we wanted to live in Italy and you don't have an Italian passport. I currently live in Australia and to go and move to Italy, you need to go through a whole lot of work to get a citizenship or a passport and et cetera, all those sorts of things. Whereas now you can basically move between the different ecosystems at the drop of a switch, perhaps. So just making things a lot more seamless and a lot more efficient. A lot of good news there for ETH. So let's take a look at fear and greed index. You know, we check this out every day on the channel. 93, we are testing highs again. Last month at this time, 84, last week at 80, yesterday 92, now 93. So it's definitely been on the increase, but we're not seeing the prices move too much more on Bitcoin's high compared to what it was when we hit the all time high at 42,000. Currently sitting at around 44,000, if we take a look at coin market cap with Ethereum at 1700. The market cap overall 1.3 trillion, nearly 1.4 trillion. Now let's take a quick look at Ethereum itself and just check out the charts. 
Ethereum USD, of course, that's up. Ethereum's market cap also up. Ethereum Bitcoin, the yellow chart, the chart that we all want to view. Uh, it's still down, but it looks like it's heading in the right direction. That's why we are betting heavy on Ethereum compared to Bitcoin. Now, of course, I hold Bitcoin. I hold a lot of Ethereum. And the point with holding Ethereum is to get more Bitcoin with some of it. Overall, I still think Ethereum is going to do amazingly well. And I've got a couple of charts to look at at the end of the video. So let's move across now to the chart and have a quick look at where we sit on Ethereum versus Bitcoin. This is the Binance chart because it has more volume data. Currently, we are sitting above the double top, which we've broken out of. This is one of those signals, which is a classic, classic setup. We've also seen an inverted head and shoulders, or you could also call it a cup and handle, whatever tickles your fancy on the day. Basically, there's a shoulder, there's a head, there's a shoulder. We've broken the neckline. That's what you want to see in a strong move to the bullish side, so a strong move up. What we don't want to see from here is a breakdown and a close below these levels. We don't want to see the market begin to find uh, lower highs, lower lows from this level. So we really don't want to see the market go anywhere below the 0.035 for too long. So we could see a spike down because this is cryptocurrency. Spikes happen in the market. But overall, we definitely want to see it start to uh, accumulate above these levels and then begin its move up. So we've talked about Ethereum as a way to get more Bitcoin. What I'm talking about here is we want to view it against the Bitcoin chart. So let's move this chart across, use the measured move tool. 0 0.038, if we want to double our Bitcoin, what do we have to get to? 100% and that's going to sit somewhere around 0 0.078 of uh, Bitcoin. And that if Bitcoin didn't move in price, that would then put Ethereum at around a $3,400 Ethereum with Bitcoin staying at its current price. So we know that Bitcoin is going to move up. Say Bitcoin doubles from this point, from 45,000 to 90,000, 100,000, then Ethereum would be double that again. So that would be 34 times two, around $6,800 Ethereum. And we could still see the uh, Bitcoin value increase to that point there. So our Ethereum trade is still on track to at least double our Bitcoin value. That's, that's a conservative look. I'm not trying to get too crazy with the numbers here. Again, this is your home of hopium free cryptocurrency content. If we wanted to go crazy and bring all the hopium and good stuff in, let's go nuts and say we want to get a tripling of our Bitcoin value, which isn't out of the question because it has been done before against Bitcoin. Let's take the chart with more data in it, but we're not going to pay too much attention to the volume. Basically, it's the ETH BTC on the Bitfinex chart as there's a lot more history here. So these are our levels that we're watching using the measure up. We're looking for 200%. That brings us out somewhere at 0.115 at, from our current level that is. So if we're buying in now, we're looking for 0.115, say 0.12, which is a 12% of a Bitcoin, that's to get our triple, double and triple our Bitcoin value from this current point. We go again, then we've got to be somewhere up around 15%, 15 and a bit percent of a Bitcoin value. So let's keep tracking this along the way. We're gonna look at it in all of our Ethereum videos and just keep up to date with what's going on here. So of course, if you wanna stick along with that journey, hit the subscribe button, bell notification icon, and like the video up so that you see the content come up in your news feed. Let's take a look at a little bit of Bitcoin news just to spur on the space, bring us some hopium. Uh, this one here is Jack Dorsey commits a million dollars to Coin Center on top of Grayscale's two million donation. So I'm bringing this up, not that we really care if a million dollars is being donated to Coin Center, but Jack Dorsey loves his cryptocurrency. He's bought crypto in Square and it's also accepted on Cash App. Next piece is Twitter's CFO considers buying Bitcoin while Grayscale reports heavy interest. So there's a little bit of uh, notes down below here. Grayscale's CEO revealed that they have been approached by major companies to buy Bitcoin. The main concern for institutions is the regulation of the crypto market and the lack of legal framework. So he says, you're going to see a lot of visionary leaders and disruptive companies realizing that they will move from why, why buy Bitcoin to why not buy Bitcoin. And we'll see the next company adopt Bitcoin to their balance sheets. So that's a pretty interesting one to have a look at. 
On top of that was the Twitter CFO looking to buy. So Twitter CFO Ned Segal revealed that the company could buy Bitcoin soon. I don't think that's too far-fetched to see if Twitter would buy Bitcoin considering Jack Dorsey loves Bitcoin, Jack Dorsey owns Bitcoin, Square App owns Bitcoin, Cash App has payments in Bitcoin, you can buy and sell on there as well. So why not the CFO buy his own Bitcoin and why not Twitter buy Bitcoin? Will Twitter go down the path of Tesla and purchase close to 10% of their balance, their cash balance in Bitcoin? If that's the case, let's have a look at how much cash does Twitter have. This is some old data. I've just typed it into Google and 2019, 6.6 .6 billion. What's 10%? about 600 million. Nothing too crazy like Tesla, you know, it's about a third, but still pretty decent. I don't have 600 million. I'm pretty sure you guys watching don't have 600 million either, otherwise you probably wouldn't be here. So 600 million into Bitcoin, pretty big deal. And I think that would at least spike the price uh, for the short term, like we're seeing on Bitcoin. 8th of February is the day that Tesla announced that they had Bitcoin on their balance sheets saw about a 20% rise and now we're just taking a little bit of time to cool off from that point. That's a third, probably has nothing in the same approach that we could say, look, if Tesla pumped the price 20%, what would Twitter do buying about a third? Would it pump the price 7%? Who knows? Probably not. There's a lot more people that love Tesla than they do that loves Twitter. We all know Twitter has its problems. I could still see it at least push the price a little bit in the short term like Tesla has already done if that was to ever happen. I definitely think Twitter will probably buy some uh, Bitcoin, may even buy some Ethereum somewhere down the track. This is all speculation, but of course that's what it's all about in this game at the moment. So there's another one. I would probably tick that off on the list and say, yeah, for sure, Twitter's, Twitter's in there. And this one is massive. MasterCard to support cryptocurrency payments in 2021. This was just put out today, 11th of February. MasterCard is moving beyond crypto cards to support direct payments in select cryptocurrencies, but not Bitcoin. So MasterCard will allow customers to merchant payments in cryptocurrency this year without the need to settle in fiat. That's pretty big. The announcement makes clear that MasterCard is interested in integrating stable coins. So we could sell off our gains, our profits from our cryptocurrencies. I'll have an exit strategy video coming up as well. So if you want to be notified about that, of course, hit the subscribe and the bell notification icon down below. That's for the exit strategy. And so we could have some stable coins sitting around that then we can go and spend on our MasterCards. Just looking at this article here with what MasterCard has planned. Visa has also mulled running cryptocurrencies on its network, but at least Visa, uh, we can have crypto debit cards that are supported by Visa, whereas MasterCards, it has a couple of players, Wirex and BitPay, but nothing like crypto.com at the moment, which is using Visa. So we can see here as well that they're just slotting in their old article a couple of weeks ago, Visa could add crypto to its payment network as well. So if that's the case, that is game over in my opinion. That is crypto being accepted everywhere. Obviously everyone has a Visa or MasterCard. There would be such a small percentage of people in the developed world that don't have a Visa or a MasterCard of some form. So that would be pretty much a game over there. Everyone would be able to understand what it is or at least see it that they could use it. Finally, the CEO Al Kelly says, to the extent a specific digital currency becomes a recognized means of exchange, there's no reason why we cannot add it to our network. So I already have 160 currencies today. Look, I think that's pretty big news. I haven't seen it come up too much. So maybe it's been swept under the radar so far. With that in mind, this is big news and we're not seeing too much happen on the price chart of Bitcoin. Like we just had a look at there, we're starting to see a little bit of a cool off. Maybe we need some time to rest and recover again after the Tesla news, or maybe we're going to see another push down to retest some of these lows. I'm unsure yet. Uh, so far, we have to continue with the upside. The bulls are still playing the game. The bulls are still in action. They're still there holding, holding us up. Uh, essentially, the trend is up, so we can't think that there is a top just yet. We can't be shorting anything because the trend is your friend. Trend is still up. A lot of the swings, it's still up. We have not seen a break of the one day swing either. Lastly, let's take a look at the ratio gang. A friend of mine sent this to me because seriously, what the F you guys, seriously. All right, so basically this is showing us at what prices Ethereum should be if it were to be uh, 
as great a value as Bitcoin or if it could flip Bitcoin. So we've got the little dolphin emoji here to say that this is the value of Ethereum if we were flipping Bitcoin right now. So we should be here basically means that if we were at half the value of Bitcoin, we should see Ethereum at a 0.0813 of a Bitcoin, which is what we just looked at on the chart. If we wanted to double our Ethereum value, uh, that would leave a, bring us to a $3,600 Ethereum. And we should at least be here. We should at least be half the value of Bitcoin. Why? Why should we be? Essentially, the question they're asking here is, is Ethereum network with everything it can do, everything that's running on top of it, worth at least half as much as the Bitcoin network? If you think yes, then we should be at least half of the value of Bitcoin. And if we are under this value right here, then we are well undervalued. So we could get up to this point. We could easily double our Bitcoin value just by holding Ethereum. Personally, I'm in that space. I am an Ethereum holder, a maxi, probably not, but I do see a lot of potential with Ethereum. So I think this is where we should be sitting somewhere up around here. Uh, it's definitely a lot more to, to grow in the Ethereum space and uh, the flipping, we'll wait and see. Maybe we will get to a market cap size larger than Bitcoin. If you want to stake your cryptocurrencies, check out crypto.com up to six and a half percent per annum on supported altcoins and there's a list of them here ethereum's there litecoin bitcoin a hell of a lot of majors here and also stable coins we were talk, talking about earlier if you wanted to hold those after taking some profits which we got to look at in an exit strategy video then uh, 10 percent per annum if you're locking up for one month eight percent per annum just holding stable coins aussie dollars us dollars british pounds chuck it on there eight percent per annum hell of a lot more than we're getting in our current banks i've got a link to this in the description and as well with SwiftX if you wanted to buy cryptocurrencies in Australia. Check that out down below. Thank you guys. If you found some value, hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel. Let's get us to 60,000 subscribers and I'll see you at the next video. Till then, have more fun to get more done.